Three weeks later, Formula One crossed the Atlantic and came to Mexico City. Nigel Mansell made an early inspection of the track, giving his thoughts on the Peraltada corner. And because it's such a fast corner, it's going to make it mighty dangerous because if you get on the marbles and you're in fifth or sixth gear, you know, your history, you're going to go off. Mansell survived this nasty moment, but he was open in his criticism of the track. The bumps are terrible and you're fighting for control all the time. And I mean, it's not nice feeling because it's an accident waiting to happen all the time. Indeed, Senna, who had a major accident here in 91, hit the bump on Friday and lost control. The Brazilian was in considerable pain from an injured leg. However, he would be fit enough to drive again on Saturday, on his 32nd birthday, and qualify a brave sixth on the grid. His role of being the main threat to the Williamses was taken on by Benetton and by Michael Schumacher. The team were delighted and Michael's confidence rose with every lap he drove. Mansell took pole position once again but this time Patrese was just fractionally slower and Schumacher was less than a second adrift. With the Englishman having won here five years ago, but being beaten by Patrese fair and square in 1991 after a big battle, the race seemed wide open. At the start, however, Mansell pulled away clearly. But in the midfield, chaos reigned as Carl Wendlinger hit Capelli's Ferrari and sent him into the wall. Mansell led into the first corner, and all Patrese could do was watch the tail of the other Williams once again. Capelli, meanwhile, was eager to get back to his pit, as Wendlinger paid a little more attention to the march. Mansell led Patrese, Senna and Brundle, and Schumacher recovered from a bad start by forcing Berger out of fifth spot. The German would soon pass Brundle for fourth, and it became third place when Senna's transmission broke on the twelfth lap. For more than half of the race, Berger and Brundle bitterly disputed fourth place. The Englishman was in truly inspired mood. And a spectating Senna found it all rather amusing. But Ferrari's star Jean Alesi found the lack of his car's straight line speed appalling when De Cesaris easily passed him on lap 30. The Frenchman's engine would expire two laps later. And the same thing happened to a frustrated Martin Brundle, 20 laps from home. But it was no problems for Mansell, apart from a smashed mirror, and he easily scored his second win of the year. He eased off towards the end, allowing Patrese to come closer, while Schumacher stepped on the winner's podium for the first time. And he adapted well to the role, proving a tough man with the champagne. But after the race, most had only one question in mind. It looked fairly easy, was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't. 